All right, so what we have here is uh, a list called the solubility rules. And the solubility rules tells you whether something will dissolve in water or not. If it does not dissolve in water, that's called insoluble. So it's insoluble in water or it is soluble in water. All right, so uh, l looking at the solubles, uh, you know, we have all nitrates, acetates, chlorides, bromides. So you can see that they are uh, listed by the anion with a couple exceptions, ammonium and group one. Group one meaning anything in the first column, excluding hydrogen. Uh, so lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, um, sulfates. So now if something is soluble, you can see there are some exceptions. So that would mean if it's soluble but there's an exception, that would make it insoluble. Uh, example, NaCl. NaCl is a chloride. So we'd look here and we'd see all chlorides are soluble except silver, lead, and mercury. And this is sodium. So that would mean this will dissolve in water. And the way we show that uh, in a chemical reaction is we write AQ, which stands for aqueous, uh, which means that particular substance is dissolved in water. Um, another example, let's say we had strontium sulfate. All right, well, will it dissolve in water? Well, it's a sulfate. All sulfates are soluble except, and there's cal uh, strontium, right after calcium. So that means this will not dissolve in water, and the way we show that in a chemical reaction uh, is we put an S next to it for a solid, meaning it's not going to dissolve in water. It's going to exist in water as a solid, which is going to float to the bottom. Uh, that solid is called a precipitate. All right, a precipitate. It's called a precipitation reaction. It occurs in the reactions that we've been doing in double replacement reactions. All right, so let me, uh, let me get rid of this and let me uh, start over. Let's say we have sodium chloride plus silver nitrate. Now, normally in the directions that I give, I will say both reactants are in aqueous solution unless otherwise indicated. If you take advanced chemistry with me next year, it gets a little more advanced. Uh, but for now, you're not going to have to worry about the reactants. But this would be a chloride. It is not one of the exceptions. So that would dissolve in water. It would be aqueous. This is a nitrate. All nitrates are soluble. And notice there it doesn't say except group one. It says and. So that means this one will also be dissolved in water. So now let's think about that. What does it mean to be dissolved in water? Well, if I put NaCl in a beaker, if it is going to be soluble, what that means is it's going to break into its ions. Uh, let me change the thickness of my pen here. You can see it a little better. And make it a pen. So we have Na ions and we have chloride ions in solution. That's called dissociation. You add an ionic substance to water, it dissociates or breaks into its ions. So we don't have NaCl anymore. Now we have an aqueous solution of sodium chloride, which means it exists as ions. Well, the um, silver nitrate is going to do the same thing. The fact that it is soluble means it is going to dissociate into silver ions and nitrate ions. So now when we write the chemical reaction for this, well, what happens? It's a double replacement reaction. So we're going to get sodium with nitrate, and we're going to get silver with chlorine, chloride. Plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one. Okay, so I did that right. So now what we need to consider then is, all right, I'm taking this beaker and this beaker, and I'm mixing the two into this beaker. So I'm dumping in the Na ions and the Cl ions. I'm dumping in the silver ions um, and the nitrate ions. So now they're positives and negatives, so they're going to be attracting one another. So when the sodium attracts to the chlorine, we know that that's going to dissolve because it's soluble. When the silver attracts the nitrate, it's going to dissolve because it's soluble. But on this side, now we have sodium being attracted to the other negative. So the other positive with the other negative, which is Na with NL3, that's a nitrate. All nitrates, according to the solubility rules, are soluble. So that means that particular substance is going to dissolve. So it's just going to dissolve away. And it goes back into Na ions and nitrate ions. So that's an aqueous solution still. All right, what about this guy? Well, this is a chloride. All chlorides are soluble except... Silver chloride. So that means this particular substance right here, when you bring the silver ion near the chloride ion, it's going to bond, and you're going to make silver chloride, and it is going to form a precipitate. It's going to form an insoluble solid, which is going to settle to the bottom. And so therefore, this double replacement reaction, in this double replacement, a reaction actually occurs. 
So what we're looking for when we solve these things from now on, I'm going to start over again, is we want to form a precipitate. Let's say instead we react this with, instead of uh, silver nitrate, let's react it with lithium nitrate. Again, both aqueous um, uh, reactants. So we have lithium chloride and we have sodium nitrate again. Well, we just did sodium nitrate. That means that's going to dissolve. So in our beaker here, you know, we have Na ions, nitrate ions, lithium ions, and chlorine ions um, floating around. All right, so we know that one of the products here is going to be sodium nitrate. And we already said nitrates are soluble, so that one's going to dissolve. But what about this one? Well, that's a chloride again. And it's not a silver, a lead, or a mercury, so this one is also going to dissolve. So what that means is over here on the right-hand side, we are going to get no reaction. We're going to get no reaction because both products are soluble, meaning they're both going to dissolve away. And so you're going to have no reaction. So that's what you watch for. So if we form a precipitate, so here's a, a, the conditions of having a reaction. Uh, number one, if we form an insoluble solid, known as a precipitate, a reaction will occur, and then we'd have to balance it. The second thing you need to watch for is if you produce a pure liquid, like water. If water is produced on the right-hand side, you do have a reaction. And then the third thing is if you make either CO2 or NH3 gas. So if either of those... Our products. Now, the reason I chose, you know, we're kind of limiting things again. You know, we're, you take advanced chemistry, we get a little more involved with this. Uh, after Christmas, we're going to do something called a net ionic reaction. Uh, but for now, if we form a precipitate, we're forming a solid, a reaction occurs. If we make water, water would, you don't say aqueous for water because it doesn't make sense that water is dissolved in water. You put an L for a pure liquid. Or if you make H2O or NH3 gas. Now, we've already actually learned this because if we end up with either H2CO3 or NH4OH as a product, remember they break, this particular one decomposes into H2O and CO2, and this particular one, uh, H2O and NH3. So remember, we've already actually learned that, but if you get either of those uh, as a product, then a reaction occurs. All right, let's try some of these then. So there's the solubility rules once again. All right, so our first one there, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna move a little quickly here, so if you need to rewind and listen again, go for it. Uh, we do have a double replacement, so I'm going to predict the two products. This is a nitrate. It is, I'll move these down so you can see the rules. Nitrates, all nitrates are soluble. All nitrates are soluble. So that one is aqueous, it dissolves away. This is a chloride, all chlorides are soluble couple exceptions, but not strontium. So I ended up with two aqueous products, so I don't have a reaction there. Uh, the next one, I have NaNO3 again. I have PbCl2. This should be Pb2. All right, so I, this one is once again a nitrate, which is aqueous. This is a chloride, all chlorides except lead 2. So therefore, this one would form a solid. The reaction would occur, and you would have to balance it. Uh, the next one is NaCl, LiOH. Aqueous, it's a chloride. This is a group one hydroxide, a group one. All hydroxides are insoluble except group one. So aqueous and aqueous, once again, no reaction. Um, NaCl plus HOH. Now HOH on the right-hand side is water. You can rewrite it as H2O on this side. Remember, it's on the reactant side where it must be HOH. All right, so that one is aqueous. It's a chloride. There's water. Water is a liquid. When you make a pure liquid like water, it does form a reaction. Uh, the next one is NaCl plus H2CO3. Ah, there's H2CO3. We get H2O and CO2. Therefore, a reaction does occur, uh, and we would have to balance it. Uh, and then the last one, we got K3PO4 plus NH4OH. NH4OH, once again, NH4OH gives us NH3 uh, and H2O. So, once again, a reaction does occur, uh, and you would have to balance the reaction. All right, so then what we worked on after that is something called an activity series. Uh, so an activity series of metals, a list of metals like this, uh, at the top of the column here is, are the most reactive metals. At the bottom of the column are the least reactive metals. Uh, the arrows here are sort of self-explanatory. Uh, but the way this works is, in order for in a single replacement reaction, such as that one right there, Na is trying to replace Ba. 
Well, if Na is going to replace Ba and we get a reaction, then Na must be more reactive. Well, here's Na and here's Ba. You can see that Ba is higher on the list, therefore more reactive than the sodium is in this single replacement reaction. And so I don't have to predict the products of that because I realize that Na cannot replace Ba according to the activity series. But lithium in the next one is higher than calcium. So lithium being higher than calcium, the reaction will occur, and I will predict the products just as I have been for the last week. Uh, here's two examples that have water. Remember, water always reacts as HOH. Um, notice water is listed over here as one of the arrows. Uh, for all intents and purposes, we could just use it for there, too, if you'd like. Uh, I'm not going to make this too tricky. Again, advanced chemistry it gets a little harder, but for now. Um, here's copper. Copper is below both hydrogen there and below the fact that it can replace it from steam, and so this would be no reaction. But sodium is way up here. It can definitely replace the hydrogen from water, and so you do predict the products uh, as, again, we have been for the last week. Nothing tricky there. Now here's the little bit trickier is chlorine in this case is trying to replace fluorine. You are not going to find chlorine and fluorine in an activity series of metals because they're nonmetals. So when we have nonmetals, what we do is we use the periodic table as an activity series. And I'm only going to ask them out of the same column. So here's fluorine, here's chlorine. So fluorine is higher on the periodic table than chlorine is. Therefore, fluorine is more reactive than chlorine. And so chlorine is not able to knock fluorine out of the way. Again, it has to be higher on the list. Uh, that should be a subscript too. Uh, and oxygen trying to replace uh, sulfur. It is higher on the list. Therefore, we would replace it. All right, so there it is. So that's the last new bit for our test. Uh, and if you have any questions with that, let me know.